Well, hello there. It's Sally Cathcart here from The Curious Piano Teachers. Thank you so much for watching this video where we're going to be looking uh, very briefly at how to earn a steady income stream. And I'm delighted to also have with me my partner, Sharon Mark Taggart. Hi, Sharon. Hello, Sally. We're really excited to be doing this video today because we know how much piano teachers struggle with this. Partly because we ourselves have been there. Absolutely. We are both, we're both piano teachers, as I think many of you know. And we are, have had these problems um, for a long time, actually, in our teaching. And we've isolated three particular problems that we're going to focus on. We're going to look at the problem. We're going to look at the solutions that we found. And we're going to sort of show you how successful that can be. So the three problems we're going to start with is, first of all, the problem of feeling undervalued as a teacher. And then the problem, the second problem, which is to do with having that fluctuating income stream, never, never good at all. Um, and problem three is feeling swamped by admin. And that's a problem in particular that I tend to suffer from. So Sharon, do you want to take us through problem one, which is this idea of feeling, feeling undervalued? Yeah, absolutely. And this picture just exemplifies what I was like um, way back when I started out teaching. That moment that you're waiting on a student to arrive and suddenly a text pops in and they have forgotten about the lesson or the mom has something that seems to be more important to do. And back in the day, I would not have been getting paid for those lessons. So that was um, a bit of an income hit for me. And obviously that then turns into a huge amount of worry. Certainly, as many of us have, mortgages to pay. Um, Sally, I think you relate to this because back in your 20s, when you were a piano teacher, living in London, and we all know how expensive London is. I'm sure it was back then too. <laughs> That's not that many years ago. <laughs> I mean, what, what were your feelings? I, I, I was anxious. I, I spent quite a bit of my time. I mean, I'm a quite happy-go-lucky kind of person. So um, I didn't waste away about this. But I was definitely on the anxious side because here I was with my very first mortgage and trying to earn a steady income um, and just felt insecure all the time because I would have people who would cancel their lessons that week. Um, and if I had maybe four cancellations in a month, then that had quite a big knock on effect on the amount of income that I had and therefore not having quite enough money to either pay the mortgage or to pay for some food or whatever it was. So that really was, was a problem. Um, and I think it came out of the fact that there was no shared understanding between myself and my parents piano parents or clients yeah. about what it was that I did um, and how dependent I was uh, on that problem really. Um, but let's yeah. move on and have a look at problem two which is as I've already just been saying it's this fluctuating income stream. If you don't have those payments that are coming in regularly then it can really really build up. Um, you know there can also be a problem with parents and and clients who who don't pay on time so i used to do a system where i used to in, invoice uh for lessons every half term um and um and then people wouldn't pay for two or three weeks and then by the time you chase that up that was time consuming in itself but by the time you chase that up it was almost time for them to pay the next <laughs> installment so it was sort of an ongoing battle yeah, i mean and it really did really feel like a battle at that point what about you sharon yeah. have you had problems in that yeah i mean even for me it would have been back in the day when i didn't have any sort of contract and where people could just run up and cancel lessons and that was somebody completely gone. Mm. Um, and I remember back in, in the early days, um, and I think as well it happened a lot more when I was um, a much younger teacher and a much more, uh, a much less experienced teacher as well, because back then in the day, I, I didn't even have the strategies for what I needed to do so that learning was fun and exciting. So that's the sort of thing that would have been happening in, in, in my studio. And, 
if you you lose a couple of students, well, I mean, that's you dying uh, quite quite a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. And so in that situation, you kind of hang on to students, don't you? You feel, I can't lose anybody, you know, I don't mind that they don't, you know, quite do everything that I want, but I really want them to keep, keep learning, you know, because I can't lose that income, which kind of isn't really the right approach, I don't think. Um, mm -hmm. So then with, with, with problem three, you know, uh, which is feeling swamped by admin. Um, I don't know about you, Sharon, but this is something that <laughs> just makes me feel I, I do laugh when Sally talks about this because this is something you have a complete pet here to bite, haven't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so, so you know, uh, admin, it, it's one of those sort of heavy clouds that, that sort of floats around. Um, and I never quite feel, even to this day, to be honest, you know, never quite feel on top of admin. I think I'm not alone in that personally. I think a lot of people tend to feel like that as well. Um, but, but, you know, and it, it, when I was invoicing every, every half term, or every term it was always ongoing this admin so you you would do it you know you would do it for the one half term and then before you knew it you had to do some more and you had to find the space and you had to get all your papers out and and then as i say if your people didn't pay then you had to chase them up and you had to find the space in your head again and understand what was going on am i the only one who's like that sharon no i'm i'm quite sure sally that you are speaking for a lot of people who are listening, uh, listening uh, to this video. Uh, I mean, I do remember back in the day when I was handwriting, I had that little invoice, smooth little kitbook, uh, and that's what I used. And every single month I had to go in, look at the dates, write them out, write the amounts. And I was actually totting everything up correctly, you know, those who had 30 minute lessons and 60 minute lessons. And then of course there was the inevitable people who would not pay and i know i'm alone in that there were always there's always those particular parents who are the same every single time and it gets to week three of the month and finally they've actually paid of course the next week then they get the invoice for the next one it's the feeling sally for me it was the feeling of what, even though it was not a problem or my issue but it was having to say um i i i did you know, you're just checking you you got the invoice almost apologetically. It's a and it's, I remember her feeling. It's it's uncomfortable, isn't it? It's it's really uncomfortable. It feels awkward. Um, and I was saying, wasn't I, yesterday that it, it, there is an advert going around at the moment in the UK where it's Lloyd's Bank, I think, who's talking about the M word. And it, it focuses on all these couples who are saying, we don't talk about the M word. You know, they're talking about money. That there is a sense of feeling uncomfortable uh, when you're asking people to pay for something and, um, and, and, not, and really, really not feeling particularly happy about that. Um, and it's the way that I'm comfortable in this, the way that actually, for me, I remember it was very much, I started to feel a little bit of resentment to those mm -hmm. parents. Mm -hmm. And much as it had nothing to do with their children or the, the child you were teaching, there was that feeling when they walked into the lesson, you know, we're on lesson three here. And, mm -hmm. and especially when you, and I remember that, you know, where they opened up and you asked, you know, the seven year old, did your, has your mommy sent a little, a little envelope with, with, with the money? No. And it was, <laughs> you had to get your head in a different space and try so hard because it was like, you were literally going in like, this is week three. You know, I hope the parent is going to land at the door afterwards and pay me this money because... Yeah, yeah. So, I, I think it's time to turn on to the solutions, don't you? We've looked at the problems and you can tell we've been there. We feel the pain in these situations. So, um, we're going to look at three solutions for each one, one, of, one solution for each problem. So, the first solution is to do with creating professional contracts. And the second solution is about establishing guaranteed payments. And solution three is then feeling in control. And these are solutions, again, that Sharon and I have used, are using, um, and we're using them with quite a high degree of success. So Sharon, tell us a bit more about solution one, which is the professional contracts and 
why that's important. Okay, so a few years into my teaching, I realized that I needed to create some boundaries. And I think that this is really a very, very key part of the, the whole point of having a contract. And I think I was probably caught quite by surprise that parents are actually, once they know the boundaries that you set, they're quite happy to abide by them. And I think sometimes we're the ones who are actually putting ourselves and our parents and students in that difficult spot by not setting clear boundaries and saying, this is, this is the duration of your contract. This is what I expect. And, you know, in terms of this is what happens when you miss a lesson. And so for me, that was a real eye opener. I think I went in quite quietly about it in the first instance and I didn't set the very, um, very deeply clear and quite, uh, I mean, for example, if you miss a lesson in my studio, that is, I do not make up lessons. That is what's in, uh, in my policy. I'm just going to go through uh, some of these pages here and then I'll get to that and I'll talk a little bit more about this. This is just the, the general page where I capture where it says teacher there. I just have typed in my own uh, name and address, studio address there. Um, the terms and conditions I lay out on a separate page. And then I state the lesson day and the time. And that is that dedicated slot, whereas years previously I was finding what was what was my space and my free time and giving that to catch up lessons that have been missed by, by the students. And then again, that is signed. And that is a legally binding contract. So when they sign there, that means that they will have read and understood the terms and conditions. Uh, I will also, Anna Sally, you do this as well, where you have a, a calendar and where it's really clear that the our adult students or our parent, piano parents know exactly when they're supposed to be there. Um, no, I, I really, I really like those, um, Sharon. Uh, I like the clarity of them. I like the teaching contracts that that you've got there in the agreement, so that it's all laid out for people, for the parents before they start. And as you said, it it is, um, it is surprising when you do it for the first time that you find that parents really do respect this and actually they really like the clarity and it does put your relationship with a parent on a completely different footing and they do begin then to uh, to take you seriously they also begin interestingly to take the lessons more seriously and because they are committed for the whole year this is a yearly contract they're committed for the whole year to those lessons, um, they actually make sure that little Johnny or little Jane, whoever it is who's learning, is also committed. Um, now, what I have on my contract, which I think we we'll probably look at in in a moment or two, um, is is a contract for all three parties. But I think what Sharon's now pulled up here is we specify the number of lessons that we give um, and uh, how long it's going to last for and also the fees and when they are due, and um, the missed lessons. So Sharon has already said that she doesn't do makeup lessons. I think you teach, is it 40 lessons over, over the academic year, Sharon? I do indeed. Um, and the other thing that's worth being really clear about at this point is that both Sally and I have a yearly contract. So I've just been talking about parents will sign on the dotted line. When they sign on that dotted line, that is where, again, we we'll see here lessons. The teacher will give, in my case, that is 40 lessons over a 10 month period. In Ireland, we have holidays, summer holidays. Kids are out of school July and August. So those are the two months of the year that I don't teach. I take one week uh, for Easter and two weeks for Christmas. And, um, but yes, that is, that is what they are signing up to. And I didn't always have it like that. It was, I think it was a monthly contract. So people needed to let me know a month in advance if they were going to cancel lessons. And again, that was not getting me the commitment that I really wanted from mm. both my piano students and my piano parents. And I think it was probably my business coach way back 
in about 2010, 2011. And I think when I started to understand a little bit more of the business side of, of running a, a piano studio, I think I got a little bit bolder in actually going, no, well, and what do I want here in an ideal situation? You know, the contract I've got, people do, you know, I, I've drawn these boundaries, they're happy with them. But actually, is that, is that the best thing? Not just for me, but for them as well. And so at that point, that was when I took that really, and it felt a really scary move, I will say, of going, okay, the contract is now for a full year and just yeah. sign up. And if you want your money, but if you, if, you, if you decide at month six that you're going to stop lessons, you will continue to pay me. And Sally, you talk a little bit because I know that you did this kind of big move to a, a yeah. new contract. Talk about the commitment that you were getting. Well, the commitment I'm getting now is, um, has increased, I would say, from, from parents and from the pupils themselves. And if, uh, if you just want to go on to the next slide, Sharon. Um, so I run my studio slightly differently to Sharon, but I have a yearly contract. Um, I had to, because <laughs> as you've heard with the admin, um, I, I sort of had to put aside some time one summer holiday and I, I thought about this for quite a long time beforehand and I did warn all the parents and, and told them what was going to happen and had to put aside some time um, in the summer to really think through this very carefully. Now what I offer is um, a 34 uh, lessons in, a, in an academic year. So lessons shown. However, that's and that's what parents pay for. They pay for 34 lessons from me. Um, however, I do teach for 37 weeks in the year. And what I have is I, I have love, I love this. So please listen really <laughs> carefully, Mary, because if you think that my is just a little bit tight and a little bit okay, no cancellations, uh, or, or no missed up less, missed lessons um, caught up with, this is a beautiful solution. Go for it, Sally. Okay. Everyone's listening. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, the parents pay for 34 lessons in a year, but however, I teach for 37 lessons in the year. So if um, a pupil car has to cancel a lesson, then I don't make it up, but they can come during the catch-up weeks for a lesson. So some parents um, and some children manage to come to every single lesson. And if they can do every single week, if they can do 37 weeks, then they get 37 lessons. So they get three free lessons in effect. And I've had one or two pupils this year who have done that, who've actually got all the way through to 37 weeks of lessons in a year, which of course is, is great and, and everybody benefits. I do charge slightly more than the majority of people in my area. Um, but there again, you know, they have that commitment from me and they all know what is involved. So I have a calendar just like Sharon. I have the three uh, catch up weeks scheduled into the pianos, into the, into the piano calendar and that everybody knows that they are welcome to come in those weeks. Now, if I'm ill, um, then I will make up the lesson time um, during the, it actually says a 34 week period, it's actually the 37 week period. So for example, this year, or last academic year, I was ill with the flu in the November. So it meant I ended up having to cancel two weeks of lessons. The second week I was feeling better, but I wasn't able to give uh, a good quality enough lesson for me to think that I was giving the value. So. I had to make up two extra weeks during the year and either I do that on a free teaching day or I do it I, I think I went on a week longer this July than I would normally do because of that uh, that flu incident so I should be rethinking that a little bit but the basics will stay stay the same um, of course if a pupil is too ill to come then um, uh, then and or if they come to a lesson and I think they're too ill to be there, then I also reserve the right there to, to stop the teaching, which I, again, I have done once or twice um, because I don't want their, <laughs> I don't want to try and sneeze that's, in and things. I think things. that's really important. I think that, I mean, that's another, something I really love about, about what you've got here, Sally, because if we then catch whatever they've got, yeah. that means Absolutely. we're sick for 
potentially the next one or two weeks, which yeah. is not going to, to help the situation because then we have got all those those missed lessons um, to, to catch up with because we, we nailed. So I think it's a really, really fabulous uh, one-liner to be in there. Yeah. And the other thing I'm going to say at this point is, again, just have these... This is the lovely thing. When things are in writing in a contract, it's just simple statements, but they will make your life a heck of a lot easier when you get them. And, and when you don't renege on them, when someone comes and asks you to, I think that's also very important because when you've got a new parent or a new student and they, they ask you to waver on that, the secret is every time to say, and just refer them back to what you've got there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for example, if someone wants to get out of the, the yearly contract, you just refer them back to this um, statement here. For example, you know, your child is expected to complete the full 10 month program of lessons. Should your start, child stop lessons for any reason, you are obliged to continue to pay any remaining installments. And I've got to say, in my experience, I haven't actually had anyone ever ever ask this no and i think again it's just because they are when you go through the terms and conditions with them and sally i know you sit down with them as well and talk through all of your policies and and when you have that communication and when you're kind of going look this is what you're signing up for and of course if they're not okay to sign up for it then you really don't want them anyway because there's going to be problems. So if someone says, well, you know, I really don't like your cancellation policy or I really don't like that, you know, if we miss lessons. And a simple one-liner is just that they're not a good fit. If they're not prepared to sign the contract, then it, yeah. it's, you stick with it. You don't go and create another contract with a clause. No. For that. No, no. You have a professional, your professional boundaries, and it's up to you really to decide where they are. You know, we've, as you can see, Sharon and I have, have it slightly differently, but we do know where our boundaries are and we, we absolutely stick to them. So as I say, you do need the time to go away and think about these and create them. So depending on the time of year when you're watching the video will depend on um, when you want to actually start to implement it. If, you, if it's something you're thinking that, well, this could be really useful for me. Um, I think you need to think about it quite a long time in advance before you actually implement it um, so for example you might think about it one summer holiday um, tell the parents as you start the next academic year this is the last year i'm going to be running this um, pay-as-you-go system or, or uh, termly system um, instead i'm moving to a yearly payment system that will be implemented this time next september so they've got lots and lots of time to um, adjust to it you can tell them about it you can you can um, help everybody become better informed and work out where your professional boundaries are so shall we shall we move on here sharon because um I think we've got something else that I, as Sharon says, uh, one thing I, just very briefly on this, one thing I like to do is I will sit down with every, with the student and the parent, particularly the new ones, and they, we will go through the contract together. And line by line, they have to tick <laughs> what their responsibilities are in the contract, what the, sh the student also has to have uh, uh, tick their responsibilities, and I also will tick my responsibilities, and we will all sign it, including the student, however young they are. Okay. And it makes such a difference. It makes um, such a difference. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'm just quickly going to mention here is a guiding principles. And Sally, I love that in your contract, um, you, have, you have studio policy all built in there as well, and where you have guiding principles. And there is a webinar on our YouTube channel. Sally, you had the name of it on the tip of your tongue earlier, which is? Can you, can you summarize your teaching uh, philosophy on the back of a napkin? Or your teaching approach, I think, on the back of a napkin. That was the one, wasn't it? Yeah. So look out, look out for that one, um, because that is where we talk through um, the guiding principles um, for the curious piano teachers. So just if you're wanting to, to know a little bit more about that, 
that's another video. But, but that's, okay, really, but that, that's really basically saying, you know, you've got to know what it is you're teaching and you, you've got to wear your heart on your sleeve, basically, again, with it. Um, anyhow, let's move on. Solution two, establishing um, guaranteed payments. So we have a contract in place. Great. And um, as part of that, we um, have a fee for the lessons for the whole year. We don't do it by, by the lesson or by the hour, but we have a fee for the whole year. And our parents pay um, a month a monthly by monthly standing order uh, we divide obviously the fee by 10 because we both actually ask them to pay for 10 months of the year a standing order is really easy to set up um, you can they then have we then have automated payments for the full duration of the contact period and here Sharon's got the standing order which I really like it's so clear that standing order um, and you can just go through the pet with it with the parents um, fill in all the details that you need to fill in from your perspective um, and then do it with the parent and they set it up and then do you know what happens this money kind of comes into your account at the beginning of every month or whenever it is that you'd like the standing orders set up for. And you then know how much regular income you have coming in from that area. You know how much you need to actually find in, in other areas. Um, and the other great thing is that parents really love it because they know what they've got going out every month. And, you know, just like any of us, we all like to know our, our income and our outgoings and um, parents like that as much as anything if they know they've got that commitment every single month then that in my experience they go oh that's really good yes thank you so much yeah. for doing that yeah Sharon and I've even I've even had one parent um, who's once said to me you know this standing order the thing this this is great it's I kind of I kind of forget I actually pay you <laughs> because I'm not either getting my purse or getting my checkbook and a pen to pay you every month. It just comes out along with my mortgage and my electric bill. And it's just another thing that comes out. So along with what Sally has just said, the fact that they love to know ahead what's coming out and when it's coming out. For me, I set it to come out um, at the very beginning. So it, it comes into my account on the first of the month. And, you know, it's super easy. You can go in, you can check that all the payments have come through and that's it. And you don't have to go chasing anything. I have never, ever, since setting up standing order, I have never chased a single payment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it really is. It's, it, it, it sounds too good to be true, but it really is. It makes such an amazing difference um, to our lives as, as piano teachers. And it gets rid of that whole embarrassment area of things, doesn't it? That awkwardness, that, you know, uh, uncomfortable sense of, oh, I've got to ask them for money again. I love the fact that your, your, your parent had forgotten that she hardly paid you. You know, it's lovely. So really, really worthwhile thinking about this whole standing order. Um, because we'll move on to the third solution, which is feeling in control. Um, you know, with a contract in place, with the money coming in on that regular basis, then you start to feel as though you are professional and that you are able to do the other things that you really, really love in life. I mean, as I said, you know, admin business admin is not my favorite thing um, but I know if I dedicate a particular period of time I haven't done it yet I, I'm, we're speaking here in the in the height of the, the UK summer holidays and I haven't done it yet but I have it earmarked to hopefully do next week and I will spend a couple of days getting all my admin sorted out all my contracts updating all my policies updating those and um, getting them ready for the term ahead so I do that at the beginning of the term. And you know what? After that, I get to do what I love the best, which is teach the piano and play the piano and talk about the piano and make music. Oh, it's just great. Sharon, how does it make you feel? Yeah, absolutely amazing. I mean, if you think about it, one way of thinking about it is if at the minute in your um, piano teaching business and do see yourself as a business because my entire career as a piano teacher took off through actually thinking about it professionally. You come across in a completely different way. You get treated by parents and students in a completely different way. 
and they love the idea that you are professional. And I think the one thing is that, um, <clears throat> I've just forgotten what I was going to say. I was going to say something on the back of what you've been saying. So I can't remember what it was. So if you fill in there for a second and I'll see if I can remember what I was going to say. <laughs> well, we were talking about how it gives you the headspace really to, uh, to do all the other things that you really love in life, doesn't it? When you've got this administration all sort of sorted out and, and Sharon is a super organized person as as you can tell I think from what she does so um, I think it gives you that freedom to spend time with your friend and with your family in particular Sharon has a young family you know there's nothing worse than saying oh, I haven't got the time to spend with you you know Sharon I remember what I was going to say yes so if you're kind of that person who you know and if you if you are chasing that please you know Add up just how long it takes you in a month to either make the phone call, the awkward phone call, or send out emails or reminders. Or, and if this is happening automatically and you're getting paid, that's actually giving you the space to have another maybe one or two students into your schedule. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's making you a more profitable piano teacher all around. And it is important that we do... Uh, have enough money that we can feel that we are adequately paid for what we do and that again it just means that we, we can ultimately help more people yeah um, and, and you will be taken seriously more seriously as being professional and in control of what you're doing so we're coming to the end now uh, so we thought we'd just summarize very quickly what we've looked at so we've looked at problem one, which is feeling undervalued, feeling anxious, basically. Um, and the solution is, Sharon? Yeah, is to create a professional contract. And that means what you will want to action right now is sit down. And you may want to actually write down a list of the things that really bug you, the things that really get you down. Um, with dealing with this whole M word, this whole money, um, and decide what your contract looks like. What sort of things would you like to be happening in your studio? And uh, from there, and you've got, you've got to feel very, very impassioned and very empowered about it. You've got to believe in what you're actually getting out there. Um, go and get it out there. And then moving on to dealing with the second problem, where you have that fluctuating income stream, the standing order bit is definitely what makes the whole contract go round. You know, so again, for us, that's that yearly contract. But it wouldn't be the same, I don't think, if we were still expecting cash or check or the parent to actually go and do a box transfer. It is. I mean, I'm not so sure. What are your thoughts on that, Sally? No, I mean, for I, me, it's I, the Process. I, I agree. I think it's the automated process, which of course is so easy these days, um, that, that, makes, that makes a huge difference there, that you have those guaranteed payments and you know it's there for 10 months, which, okay, has two months of the year when it isn't there, but because you know that you can budget accordingly for it. Yeah. And that should be part of your fee setting um, strategy. Anyhow, that you're budgeting for those, those two months, that's your, you've got to budget into your fees, holiday pay. Yeah. Um, and if you're interested in finding out more about that, there is a blog post all about that, how to, uh, how to set your, your, um, how to set your fee. And there's a, a, a spreadsheet that you can use an automated spreadsheet to help you work out what your, your fee should be for lessons. Um, and all these things will help you deal with problem three, that, that feeling swamped, feeling heavy by the administration side of things, you know, as Sharon said, as you know, people don't pay so you have to go and chase them up and it all takes headspace and it all takes time and energy and it all causes anxiety and it causes us to be a bit stressed and resentful really about what we do so get that sorted out by the contract and the standing order and you start to feel in control and then you can begin to enjoy the success now i don't know about sharon but i certainly have have a very 
different sense of my teaching today than than I even did 10 years ago or even less than 10 years ago um, I you know I do feel that it is definitely I am teaching but that's the that's the main focus of what I do is the piano teaching not administrative administrating my piano teaching or anything like that with the paperwork sorted oh just imagine what that's like <laughs> the paperwork is sorted before the year begins you know and this increased commitment that you get from parents and students it's not a fairy tale that Sharon and I are making up it's not something that is unique to the two of us just because we are Sharon's Sally it's possible for you as well that level of success Sharon yeah I would go to say that this is probably the thing that kind of, out of these six things, and there are lots of important things in there, but this is a real heart thing for me. And it has been that increased commitment. And the fact that I have had multiple families who, you know, at the end of that 10 month contract are signing up for another year and another year and another year. And the commitments there, they are the parents are aware again of what they are what's in that contract where those boundaries are they are valuing much more highly um and again my like sally i would probably in terms of my fees be by far the most expensive teacher in in the area but again that reflects all of the investment that i have put in and when we as piano teachers invest in in our own professional development and that's what the members of the community are our online membership site are doing when you're doing it it's not even just financial commitments it's the time commitment that we're putting in we are getting strategies motivation strategies how to motivate our students how to help them practice better how to help them become more effective learners and that is again this is what we're putting in and that is also increasing this commitment so it it all goes round it all goes round mm -hmm. so in order for you to be putting forward a contract you've also got to be investing in you know it can't just be about the money side of it and as an alternative job of doing something else we've got to really feel this and got to be very wholehearted about it yeah well, we, we like to say, don't we, that we learn just as much as we teach in the Curious Piano Teachers. And we teach in a, in a particularly curious way. Um, and it's that that parents value because they learn to not only value the commitment from us and the teaching from us, but they learn to value music as well and understand the value of music within education. And the child understands the value of music as well. So it, it, it's one big picture, really. Um, other areas of success that you're going to experience um, is the elimination of the cancellation lesson. You know, the number of, of, of uh, uh, hassles that we hear about um, from teachers, you know, about can last minute cancellations. That becomes a thing of the past. Um, and because you've sorted yourself out, really, you feel more professional in what you do and that might be a very subconscious thing but you literally grow in your in your stature you feel uh, better for the professionalism that you're exhibiting you get to be financially secure for the year you know um, it can certainly really help with the family finances if you're able to say to your partner oh i have this much coming in every month you know that is guaranteed now for those 10 months great absolutely great and of course at the end it then allows you to spend more time hopefully with your family or friends or doing whatever activity you love to do the most so there is a lot that you can get out from making these shifts to the way that you organize your business and in the curious piano teachers we have the four pillars of piano teaching which is um, being a uh, being a pianist being a teacher, being a musician, and then being professional. And this 
final pillar, being a professional, um, is an important one to get in place because if that's in place, then we can enjoy the other three to, uh, to the full, really. So really important to give this some real thought and consideration. We hope that we've given you um, some of our best thoughts, anyhow, about how we organise our things. And I'm just going to say, yes, I have noticed an, a big change um, for me in the way that I can deliver things because the admin side looks after itself with a little bit of tender nurturing during the summer holidays. Sharon. Thank you so much, Sally. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. We hope that it has given you the courage to take action and to use some of those strategies and to get your teaching business um, to a place where you want it to be and to eliminate some of those things that we know from past experience are deeply, deeply frustrating. So have a great day and we look forward to seeing you on another video very soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.